What's up? It's your boy, William McKnight, One Good Now Sound Design from the MachineWarehouse.com with an exclusive sound design video from MachineMasters.com. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to try to st uh, take one of the Super Saw samples that comes in Machine 2.0, and we're going to try to make a simple string, string sounding, pad sounding type patch real quick. It should be a real simple and easy method for someone to add some strings to any production that you have or just basically jump into sound design. It's a real simple thing to do. So, hey, let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is make sure we're under all samples and, of course, under NI and we're going to type in Super Saw. And we see the waveforms pop up. Now, Native Instrument actually sampled them from C1, C2, C3. The one we're going to use is actually Super Saw C3 because it's going to place it, the, the, the best part of that sample right in the middle of the keyboard so we can play it and it sounds good. So, Now, we're not going to take all of them. I know you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't we put them all in and You'll find out in just a second. I'm trying to make this video short. So if we actually try to do every last one of the um, the samples, then it would kind of be a longer video. But anyway, first thing we want to do is we actually want to go in and cut our loop function on. And just so we can see the start of the loop, we're going to take it to here. And then we're going to take the end point of the loop somewhere to right here. Now, what we're trying to do is make sure that we loop the sample so when we hold the key down, the sample actually keeps on playing instead of actually ending. So let me show you what I mean by that. All right, I'm going um, to unactivate the loop, and this is what you get. Hold on, let's first... First, let's change the pitch and envelope to ADSR. All right, now, if I hit the note, even if I hold the key down, the sample stops playing. But when we turn the loop function on, when I hit the note, the sample plays for as long as I actually hold the note and hold the key down. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get a smooth loop going. And the way to do that is to zoom in. Zoom in on our start point. And we're going to try to get the loop to cross through the black line, the little zero crossing line. right there that's that looks close now we're going to go to the end of the loop we're going to try to make sure that we get the waveform to look sort of similar on both the the beginning and the end so basically if you look at how this is above the black line and then this drops below the black line on this side of the start loop point now when you go to the end loop point what you want to do is make sure that it sort of looks similar, but you want the top portion of the waveform to be inside of the loop. And the bottom portion to be outside of the loop. So basically, the beginning of the loop goes into the end of the loop, if, if, if that makes sense. All right, um, let's see what we got right now. Okay, now what we have is a little bit of the clicking. It sounds like a good loop, but you hear that click, click, click at the end of when it's trying to uh, loop back around and away from us. So what we're going to do is go to our crossfade, and we're going to run it up to... See, now you don't hear the click, click, click at the end of the loop. 
where it's looping back to the beginning. So now that we got a pretty good loop going, what we want to do is go and mess with our, amp, uh, our amplitude envelope. Now we want to take the attack up. So, all right, let's see the difference. See how it's attacking real hard at the beginning? When we take the attack up, it kind of eases into the waveform. Excuse me. Now, what we want to do is to make it sound more stringish, we want to take our release and sort of adjust it so when we let go of the key, Okay, now let's see what we what we got right now with the chord. And that's still kind of harsh sounding. So what we want to do is go and put a filter on. Now the filter automatically starts at one kilohertz. So let's see what that sounds like. Not quite what we want. Okay, that's not too bad, but let's see if we can increase a little bit of the resonance. Okay, now we got something that's kind of resembling some strings right there. It's got more of a pad feel to it, and it's going to be kind of hard with this sample to get a really good string sound. But as you can see, it is a sort of a synthetic string pad sound we got going there. So now what we're going to do is, so we can actually, we're going to change our polyphony to 32. That's just something that I do. Um... All right, now we can actually start adjusting some of the uh, sustain and decay. All right, now we got a nice little pass sound. So that's basically the gist of creating a real quick, simple, string pad sound now you can actually adjust it work with the filter some more you know you can uh modulate the uh use the lfo to kind of modulate the pitch you know the cut off and you can do so many different things once you actually know the basics or if you like what you got right there you can go into the effects menu right here maybe you pick out a delay something like springy the presets are pretty good, so we can go like throw the springy delay, get a reverb, maybe a plate reverb. Hold on, let's see what it what, mm, Yeah, let's go with a plate reverb. Throw the subtle reverb in there and. I'm saying you can go in and mess with it in so many different ways. You can increase the resonance. Increase the cutoff. So there you have it. Basically, that's the basics of creating a string pad synth patch for a machine out of using basically the super saw waveform that comes in machine 2.0. So, hey, 
It's your boy William McKnight, one good knife sound design from the Machine Warehouse, signing off for Machine Masters.